Thanks so much for taking the time to meet me, Mr. Slenderman. Uh, a Griff Valentine, Sony Pictures. Listen, I could see you as a huge star, Slendy, and you just haven't gotten your due. And if you ask me, it's a shame. You could be the next Jason, the next Freddy. Picture it. You do this movie with us, and I promise you're gonna be big time. We got 10 million bucks ready to go right now. Can we count on you, Slendy? That's my boy. Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs>What's up everybody, welcome to Found Flicks. On this ending explained, we'll be checking out the brand new big screen take on the once popular internet creature, the Slender Man. This will be a bit different than most of my ending explained videos and almost acts as more of a cautionary tale, looking at and investigating where everything went wrong with the movie. So let's check out Slender Man, looking at its internet origins, breaking down what little story there is in the movie and explaining the ending. First, a bit of history on the suit wearing long limbed faceless character. He was first created in 2009 as part of a Photoshop contest on a forum by Victor Surge, with two initial pictures being submitted along with a brief write-up. Seeing the Slender Man eerily unnoticed in the background by the photo's subjects, stalking his prey from afar. Delicious children, acting in a sense as a demented take on the Pied Piper. The character spread in popularity soon after, appearing in memes, fan art, and video games, but really came into prominence thanks to the web series Marble Hornets, a complex, dense series of many found footage style episodes called entries that told the story of a group of friends that encounter the Slender Man with deadly consequences. Here the character referred to instead as the operator. And these guys are really the first to flesh out the character with their own mythology and much of what we think of the character comes from the series. The show ended after three seasons and thanks to its success led to a spin-off feature length version being produced, always watching a Marvel Hornet story. Even though the original guys had absolutely nothing to do with the movie. It does keep the found footage style of the web series said to take place in the same universe and following other characters. But man, oh man, it was garbage! even with the incomparable Doug Jones playing the Slender Man. So with a bigger budget, Always Watching still failed as a movie and couldn't compete with what a couple of college kids put together with only a video camera and 500 bucks at their disposal. This brings us to the brand new feature adaptation for the Slender Man from Sony. Now, several years after the character has faded from its original heights of popularity, as well as being blamed for a horrible real life crime, Hollywood finally gets around to mining the internet trend. So with an even bigger budget and a legit studio Studio behind it, have they finally gotten the character right where others have failed? I'm afraid to say no, not by a long shot and it's kind of surprising just how poorly conceived and executed the movie is. It's not really so bad it's good or amusingly bad, something like last year's Wish Upon also starring Joey King. It's honestly just boring, and the 97 minute runtime feels twice that length. While I believe the character could absolutely work in a feature, this new version is definitely not it. A lot of it has to do with the particular story they've chosen as well as the way they present the character, who here is now pretty much a retread of Samara from The Ring, but with the internet, or I guess rings rather, since that had Samara moving onto the internet. As such, several moments feel straight up ripped out of that also very crappy movie. As for the Slender Man's interpretation itself, First of all, he feels pretty underused in the movie, which is a shame as he's played by Javier Baudet, a great in the genre having played the Crooked Man and several other terrifying creatures. And even when he does actually pop up, usually painted over with questionable CG elements, you just see him for a moment just standing there and he doesn't really do anything, cutting away right before you would expect a big scare, or you know, anything other than just standing there. And this happens consistently. Someone finally comes face to face with him, then the scene just abruptly ends feeling like it ends right before what would be the actual scare. I do wonder if Sony actually got cold feet about including more visceral horror elements and wound up cutting anything like that out. As in the trailer, there's a scene where one of the characters, Chloe, stabs herself in the eye with a scalpel in class. However, this scene is not in the released movie. It sure feels like all of these moments were cut and as such feels like the movie is more or less incomplete without these basic, more frightening elements. For his powers in the movie, the Slender Man is referred to as 
as being bioelectrical. I guess that means he's got a body, but it's also electrical. And that's what allows him to take over computers and phones and stuff, while also attaching to his host's minds. After they first see him, his victims become more and more obsessed with him, which eventually drives them insane. Here, those that encounter him have two different ultimate fates. Either he snatches you up for good or leaves you behind but leaving you forever affected by it. And even they still have trouble sticking to these basic rules they've established as we see later. In the world of the film, everyone is already aware of the Slenderman urban legend, which brings us to the main group of teen friends that we follow in the movie. Rin, Hallie, Chloe, and Katie. In the opening couple of scenes, we get to know them, and it's some of the most fake sounding dialogue ever, making me wonder if the writer has ever actually even been around another human being in his life. After school, the girls chill in a basement drinking vodka and talking POV porn as you do, and the subject changes to Slenderman as a group of boys they know at school are going to try and summon him. And they literally say, oh, the boys are doing it, so we should too, and promptly track down a video online that in one convenient package can summon the Slenderman. Ah, the internet really does have everything. Most likely doubting its authenticity, the girls watch the cursed tape. Oh, I mean the internet video. See some PG-13 level nightmare imagery, again straight out of the ring, and actually these kind of nightmare images that pop up randomly in nightmares of characters throughout the film are probably the most frightening moments. You know, a slender man tearing his way out of Hallie's pregnant stomach, her limbs all strewn around, tentacles coming out of her mouth, stuff like that. Even though these pretty much happen out of nowhere with no context whatsoever, and don't really fit the style of the rest of the film. Still, by far the best, or at least most creative visual parts of the movie. After watching the video, some strange stuff starts going down, but nothing too severe until their friend Katie mysteriously vanishes. Though the girls disagree on what happened. I mean, there's no way the video was real, right? So they spend a lot of time feeling sad about Katie being gone and continue refusing to think anything supernatural could be behind it. This trend of disbelief also goes on way too long in the story. It's like, sure, at first, maybe they don't believe it, that makes sense. But even after more girls go missing and they start seeing the Slender Man pop up and other crazy stuff, our lead is still like, that can't be happening. There's no Slender Man. I've got a date to go on. It's important. And guess what happens moments into their makeout session? Slender Man bombards her with crazy visions, turning her boyfriend into a truth or dare faced ghoul. Still in denial, Hallie? It's also an odd story choice to spend so much time with the girls being bummed over Katie's disappearance. Because as they dig deeper, they realize she actually wanted to be taken because her life is so stinky and specifically was seeking out the Slender Man for this reason, which kind of makes him into a good guy in a way by taking her. Now I'm just confused. It's by searching deeper into Katie's secret laptop that they learn more about how much the spread of the Slender Man has been going on, discovering an archive of videos from around the country of him taking various victims. And these come across as super fake and not even remotely scary. People recording things for no reason on their phones and just spot him standing there before freaking out. Something like this. Ooh, yes, sir. Those are looking mighty fine. Don't mind if I do. Nice and pumpy. So what do you think, Randy? You want cheese on your burger or what? What the fuck? No! Oh. <laughs> they also make a new online friend that had been speaking to Katie before her disappearance. Since she knows more than they do, the remaining girls ask her if it's possible to somehow get their friend back. Sure, trust a random stranger on the internet that Katie met on the Slender Man fan site. Good idea. They say you have to give up something you love. And so the girls head out into the woods, sacrificing things like pictures of their dead dad and blankets knitted by their grandma. And even though Rin tells the others to make sure to leave their blindfolds on and never take them off, because if you look at his face, you go crazy. Though I'm not sure how you would even look him in the face since he doesn't have one. As soon as this ritual begins and weird stuff starts happening, Chloe immediately removes her blindfold, seeing Slindy's face. So she, as expected, starts going nuts, giving us thrilling sequences being taunted by him. It appears in the room choking her for a second, but disappears. She's really just choking herself. Oh boy. And I guess after this, Chloe is dead or just disappears or who cares because this is the last we see of her. So with just Rin and Hallie left, what are they gonna do to stop the Slender Man from taking them? Not much really, as it turns out, and already Rin has been completely enveloped in learning every detail of the Slender Man, getting too deep, making her pretty unhinged at this point, going on a rant about how the Slender Man is like a virus, and her minds are like a hard drive that he's infected. 
Yes, that's a real line. After talking more with that person who was friends with Katie online, who it turns out was a mental patient after experiences with the Slender Man, Rin understands that she has to trade a life to bring Katie back, deciding that Hallie's younger sister Lizzie is a suitable sacrifice for this purpose. They head out into the woods and do encounter Slendy, but instead of doing what she expected, seeing him causes Lizzie to somehow slip into a coma, which doesn't happen to anyone else. The rules changing at whim when necessary for the story. And after Rin reveals what she's done to Lizzie, the long black branches of the Slender Man break through the window and take her away. So he's a tree monster now or something? Feeling guilty over her sister's fate, even though she's the moron that decided to watch the summoning video and her sister repeatedly told her not to, Hallie valiantly decides to give her life for her sisters. Returning to the forest, getting chased by Slender Man as his legs stretched out looking like a spider, he quickly gets a hold of her and she becomes absorbed into the tree that is part of Slender Man. Or he's a tree maybe? Even though he had tentacles earlier, not branches. This does bring her sister back exchanging her life for hers. And with Hallie's absorption, that's the end of their encounter with the dreaded Spoopy Man. So a couple of girls foolishly summon the bioelectrical creature, and without ever really figuring out what's going on, or really doing anything, they all die in the end. Great job, girls! Especially since they don't believe he was real for literally most of the movie. It just made them all seem incredibly stupid. And since all the information that they were given was from a stranger on the internet, it seems they didn't really have much of a fighting chance in the first place. And we're all doomed to be his victims no matter what. Except for Katie, who uh, is happy, I guess, to be part of the slender tree now. Better than having to deal with a crappy home life, I suppose. Though Hallie's stupid boyfriend guy did also watch the video. We never find out what happens to him, making me initially think they were implying how the slender virus will continue to spread with him. But once again, his fate appears cut from the final film. In the trailer, it looks like he jumps off the school's roof to his death. In the release movie, we just see him looking all distressed in class after watching the vid, and then never see him again. It honestly is seeming like they cut too much out of the movie in a desperate bid to tone down the more violent aspects. Which, why even make the darn thing in the first place? Because as is, it's a complete mess. I don't know if these cut scenes would necessarily make Slender Man a good movie, but it appears that many of its problems boil down to a last minute hatchet job in the editing room. That still wouldn't have fixed the fundamental poor choices, in particular turning the Slender Man into a blatant copy of Samara. I know he's an internet guy and everything, but maybe try to come up with something, you know, new? Sorry, I know that's asking a lot nowadays. Alrighty folks, that'll do it for this long, strange journey through the Slender Man movie. It looks like the character will never get the proper treatment on the big screen he deserves. And to me, the real takeaway here is that more money doesn't usually equal a better movie. Since again, the best incarnation by far for the character was done by a couple of non-professional college kids running around old buildings in the woods and managed to make something a thousand times more interesting and scary than this turd. What did you guys think of the Slender Man movie? Maybe an unrated cut will come out down the line and fix a bunch of this stuff. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.